and we want to welcome you. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is November 29th, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time, and this is the journey, which is the part of our international call that's focused on equipping, and we are in week eight of 10 of a study in which we're going through the book Unleashed by our very own Susan Rao, which is a book about the importance of unleashing corporate prayer in the church. And for this hour, we'll be focused on chapter eight, which is titled The Redeemed, God is Love. So um, let's have somebody open us up in prayer. And then Susan, you probably have some opening uh, comments. Let us have um, Margaret Greck, why don't you open us up in prayer? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together today, Lord. Um, this is a very important chapter, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to dig into our hearts, to really seek out what is best way of resolving conflict, Lord God, and having an open heart at all times. So, Father, we thank you for each and every one of us on this group, and thank you for um, Susan and Fred for writing this chapter. It is so crucial, so important in these days. So, Father, we ask you to help us to be transparent and to be able to look into our hearts and seek your face even more. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Margaret. Um, Susan, over well, here. I just, I just want to welcome everybody. And this is really more of a family hour because I really want it to be um, us to get into a place where we feel safe to be just transparent. Um, what we're going to be talking about will determine very much where we end up, <laughs> whether we proceed in our lives as slaves or as we proceed in our lives as sons of the most high God. And believe me, the enemy likes to take us off into the slavery <laughs> mode very quickly and easily. And he's slippery and he's very fancy. And we can all, uh, there's not one of us that has escaped this. So we all have our stories. And uh, I see some nods and some smiles and we're gonna laugh a lot. And <laughs> we're gonna laugh at ourselves too. I think we can learn to laugh at ourselves. Um, and Katya can tell us about the fall. <laughs> we welcome Katya back. She's she's just recovered, you know, from quite a, a brisk fall. And it's so good to have you back, Katya. We love you and thank you that God has healed you and delivered you from that accident. So um, uh, let's open up with a song and uh, get our hearts just prepared to just be transparent when we don't have to put on any show tonight here. Here we go, not that we would anyway, but here we go. Um, this song is no, no longer slaves and it's fitting for what we're talking about tonight. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Well, that song says it all. And uh, we are a child of God, every single one of us, created uniquely um, by the living God uh, to, um, and he has plans and to prosper us, and not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. And um, so that's the approach we're taking tonight to this subject of um, how do we, how do we traverse the world today? Um, we are in a times, uh, and we've been studying this, the end times uh, situation where with crises that are rising to the right and to the left of us, um, we are under a lot of pressure and it will want, it, the times will want to provoke offense in us. Jesus warned us in, in Matthew 24, he says that, that offenses will come. Um, it says, and he, there will be offenses um, and many will be offended, will betray one another 
and will hate one another. Isn't that a friendly environment? <laughs> and God has plunked us right in the middle of this. And um, we are a generation, I believe, that are going to be tested this way. And we are going to need to, that's why we, this Global Watch, I believe, has formed in a way to help us all walk through and navigate the waters that we're in right now. We're not going into waters. They're going to get deeper, but we are already in them and the onslaught has started. So tonight's conversation is how do we hold our, hold our place in the face of these headwinds? And um, <clears throat> basically there are two parts to tonight's story. One is um, we are all gonna be uh, like Jesus, um, tested in the area of rejection. And a rejection, I believe, is at a root. The, it's, some people call it the orphan spirit. Uh, I just, rejection makes it more uh, meaningful to me. But um, rejection will lead, can lead to unforgiveness and roots of bitterness that rise up within us um, versus running the race with endurance in God's school of character development. Uh, we, are going, we have the choice. And the choices we make, I, I like what uh, Ronald Heifetz, I quote him in this chapter, says, your management of an attack more than the substance of the accusation determines your fate. That's the es essential of the message tonight. In fact, if you get this, you get the whole message. It's your management of an attack more than the substance of what you're going through will determine your fate. So um, we have ways of approaching this. I, I'm calling it as a slave, as someone that is under a harsh master who is, has to do the, uh, the work of the master, is not really wanting to do it, and the master is cruel no matter what they do. Um, it, when we get into that place in our lives where we just everything looks really dark and everybody's looking mean and we get into places where our heads are going into accusations and just frustrations and um well, that is the setup for rejection and it is in those places where we're the most frustrated the most angry the most bitter the most you know, uh whatever you wanna say, offended maybe, that that's the place where we need to turn our attention to what we're talking about tonight. Um, slaves, when we get into a slave mindset, we um, can be, begin to nurse uh, an embittered root. And um, Hebrews 12, 14 and 15 really speaks to this. And it says, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully, lest anyone sh fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. That, to me, puts the fear of the Lord in me. <clears throat> Whenever I get into these places where I'm just, I know I'm not on top of it, I'm going under, I'm not looking at people right. How many have had those days where you have, you get a little bit critical, you get a little bit easy to get ticked off or uh, it's, it's just, this is the place where you've got to start intervening so that you don't develop it an embittered root within you. Um, and how do we fight that? Well, one of the things that, uh, that, you can do when you're in these situations where you're going under it and you're feeding into the slave mindset is to start talking about the word. What word really addresses the situation that you're getting under? The word of God will divide the soul and the spirit. It's, it's a double-edged sword dividing the soul and spirit and will bring you into a place where eventually if you just continue focusing on the word, it will bring life into your bones. Um, <clears throat> and uh, this, this kind of a thing 
is a battle for your character. So I wanted to emphasize three things when we get into these places where offense wants to settle in, where we're, like I said, we're going under, <laughs> that what we're thinking is not something you wanna repeat <laughs> out loud. Um, uh, there's three things I'd like us to remember. You handle, first of all, you handle conflict when it arises. Um, for both Fred and I used to just flee from conflict. <laughs> And um, the Lord really gave us a lesson one time where, whoa, we did not address conflict. And, um, you know, a year, year and a half later, it rose up and we really got slammed. And um, <clears throat> that has been a test for us. It's been a test of character, <laughs> uh, which I'll go into for my second point. But when you start getting that tension with somebody else or you misinterpret something, or you feel not right about a situation, address it. And you know what? God can give you the words of life so that, you know, when you address the conflict in a life-giving way, people don't even know that you're in conflict. We've seen that happen too. And God just works a miracle of grace and things continue to flow. So um, handle conflict when it arises, number one. Number two, feed accusations with the word of God. I already mentioned that. Um, we can, when you have situations where you've been mistreated or misunderstood and things you know, get haywire, um, you can be angry about those situations. It's, it's, Jesus was angry when he overturned the, temple, uh, the tables in the temple. Anger is not wrong. It's a God-given thing. It can motivate us into the right place. The issue is, and Fred and I were just talking about this, um, you have to forgive. And I believe that in thinking about this today, how do I know that I've forgiven something, somebody, but I think about a situation and something rises up in me, does that mean I have not forgiven him? No. It doesn't actually. What forgiveness is, is, and it, it has nothing to do with your emotions. It has everything to do with your thinking and what you do. And so if there's a situation that erupts, that is, is an angst to your spirit, forgiveness means that your anger doesn't drive you into acting. You hold back, you allow God's word to work in you, and then you handle the situation according to God's word. That is walking out forgiveness. You will have emotions around it, and it's not wrong. The issue is not acting on your emotions, which brings me to the third point. Bite your tongue in these situations where conflict arises. Sit back and ask God how to respond because that is walking out the forgiveness. It is also develops your character. I can tell you, uh, and we have the core values. So I'd encourage everybody to go online and look at the core values again um, for the Global Watch. And we've done that for a reason, for the very thing we're talking about tonight, because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those with a critical spirit are, and who come out with criticisms very quickly, it identifies there's a bitter root in them that, that God, God's character has not yet developed in them. So when I, if I am going to speak, so I rarely speak something critical. Um, and if I do, I've got to have a good sound reason for saying it and have some kind of life-giving measure behind it to encourage that person into the right place. So, um, and I'm not, I'm not putting myself out there as the expert on conflict management. It's something that we have learned and we've taken some uh, deep lessons on this. I'm, we are firm believers in speaking life 
Um, and that means sometimes we have to correct course. As watchmen, what does Habakkuk 2 1 say? Um, I will stand my watch and watch to see what he will say to me and when I am corrected. So God corrects our course. And so we are in times of tremendous change and we will be making course corrections periodically and because God's things are changing. <laughs> but all that to say, I wanna just encourage us all to not be afraid of conflict, but take these points of handling conflict when it arises, feed the accusations with the word of God, be angry, but do not sin and bite your tongue and allow God to work on your character until you've got words of life, words, the right words to correct the course and the words of life to follow it to, to really encourage the other person. So um, those are the main topics of this, this chapter. I can tell you though, um, our management of any kind of an attack, more than what it's about, will determine our fate. And God uses these tests to develop our character and our resolve. So that's it in a nutshell, Fred. I don't want to talk anymore because uh, in the small groups tonight, we really want you to um, delve into this and maybe even be transparent about something you're struggling with. Um, I had a struggle today and I, I you know, Fred kind of got me out of it. He had to coax me out of it. <laughs> and I, I, I'm going to get on top of it. I'm determined to get on top of it because I need to understand what is provoking it. And um, I'm not going to say anything until I figure it out. So it's, it's okay to be in those places, but that's where I, I spent the afternoon in the word of God. And I'm, I'm waiting for that living an active word to bring the, aha, this is what I can do, moment. So um, conflict is good. David was a man after God's own heart. He ran to the conflict. He ran to Goliath. He dealt with Saul directly. And God used him mightily. And through it all, I'm sure his character, his character was tested. And um, we are in times where the watchmen, uh, I look at all of you, my, our prayers are God raise up the company of people who can stand the test, who can stand the headwinds, who can hang on to your glory, hold their mouths shut until the word of life comes forth <laughs> and, and um, be an encouragement to one another. So uh, Fred, I'm going to turn it over to you to bring this into a, um, a good place. And by the way, he won't say this about himself, but Fred's an amazing, amazing conflict manager. You can um, speak. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sue. Uh, I always have fear and trembling when you say stuff like that, because when you say things like that, then God um, opens up new tests and trials in that very area. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> kind of an interesting week. Okay. Uh, I just have a couple things to, to just to add to what you were saying, Sue. And, and by the way, this is a chapter that we could spend probably three or four weeks on because it's so important. It's so important for us to get the right heart and the right mindset. And we all, it's things that we all struggle with, um, <clears throat> if we're honest. Just to say this. Uh, number one, bitterness is probably the, the most poisonous thing that we can uh, have. It, bitterness is, there's actually been all kinds of studies that have been done that show that bitterness can lead to all kinds of not only psychological problems, but uh, actually physical problems. And we know some people that have walked in bitterness and um, lo and behold, they developed uh, chronic neurological issues and, uh, you know, you, I can't prove that that was a direct result of bitterness, but it's just, I think it's more than just a coincidence. So we need to be constantly looking for any root of bitterness in ourselves that might be developing and get rid of it. And the way that we get rid of it is uh, 
<clears throat> through forgiveness. And I think we, you know, we, we, we all struggle with the whole issue of what is actually forgiveness. And I just want to re-emphasize this. Forgiveness is not an emotion. It's an act of your will in which you release the other person from judgment and release them to God, and you don't continue to hold the offense against them. And um, oftentimes you need to declare it. Uh, you don't have to have any particular feeling. You don't have to wait till you feel forgiveness. It's not based on your feelings. It's based on an act of your will. And this is really important because that the very person that you need to forgive, you may have no, you may feel no love towards them or any concern or any care for them. But forgiveness will, it releases them, but it also releases you. And you may need to do this several times, but when you do it as an act of your will and you, you actually, um, what I do is I, I actually say it out loud. I forgive so-and-so for, you know, <clears throat> what, what they did to me. They don't need to know many of the time, many, much of the time they don't, they don't know, they have no idea. But when you are, the way that you know that you need to forgive somebody, one of the ways is if you have a certain area of your life where you're just not hearing from God or things just aren't, you're not getting breakthrough or you're not having, um, <clears throat> you're just not, you're just not, it's not right. You're not feeling God's love. You're not feeling his peace. And it may take a while to, uh, to understand that you, there's somebody involved with that. It may be a situation, but it may bring up something that <clears throat> causes you to just not be able to move forward. And then the simplest thing to do is just ask the Lord, Lord, is there somebody in this situation that I need to forgive that I have not uh, now forgiven? And then you wait to hear the answer. So that's really, that's point one, very important. Point two is that towards the end of the chapter, Susan was talking about endurance and running, basically running with endurance, the race that's set before us. And here's the, here's the issue is that we can be called of God and even people who are greatly called of God, we are going to be tested and we are going to have trials. It's just, it is part of God's school of character development. It's what we signed up for when we um, accepted him as Lord and savior. And uh, in that moment of, you know, surrender, we said, God, I'll do anything uh, for you. And, um, and uh, guess what? He's, he tests us in that. And it's not meant to be a punishment. It's meant to strengthen us. And indeed, when we, as we all know, because we've been through this, if we go through the trials and we get through them, we come out on the other side stronger. But while we're going through the trials, it is no fun. And, um, and so this is where we need each other. This is why this is part of the whole issue of corporate prayer. Part of corporate prayer is we need prayers from each other to help us through the trials. So I'm going to put the um, I'm going to put the questions in the chat. I just did. It's a little bit long because I I put a little pre summary thing. So I'll just read this off quickly and then we'll go right into the into the um, sessions. <clears throat> Rejection le leading to unforgiveness can cause a root of bitterness to take hold in our lives. This in turn can cause us to remain in a slave master relationship with the Lord. This robs us from having the inner confidence that we're children of God who can enjoy an intimate relationship with him and can go to the throne of grace with boldness. So the question is, it's very personal. Who in your life do you need to forgive and extend grace towards? That's question one. Um, question two is this. As watchmen, we're all enro enrolled in God's school of character development. This school and God's calling come with many tests and trials. <clears throat> so the question is, how can we follow Hebrews 10.24 and spur one another on towards love and good deeds? Um, let's pray. <clears throat> for our brothers and sisters on the call who are ex currently experiencing trials. It's really helpful when we're going through something that we uh, seek somebody out who's not going through the same thing and ask for their prayer and their encouragement. And it helps us get you know, the right perspective. It helps strengthen us. And this is another issue where we're not lone rangers. We really do need each other. 
and we need each other to, we need to pray for each other. And again, this is, it's important that we understand this. If we're having trials or struggles in a particular area where God has called us, it doesn't mean that God hasn't called us there or that God's trying to punish us. It just means that we're undergoing a particular trial and God will see us through it, but we need the, the help of others and the prayer of others. So hope that makes sense to everybody. Susan, are we ready to go into the breakout sessions? We are all set. So we're only going to have 15 minutes. I don't expect that we're going to be able to get to everybody to answer each of the questions, but we need to have a few brave souls who are willing to um, be transparent and, uh, and uh, you know, talk about who they need to forgive and um, that they're going through trials and, we, and, and need prayer. So let's just, um, let's go into the sessions then, Sue. Okay, very good. Oh, I feel a little bit apologetic because this kind of a conversation could go on for a couple of hours. <laughs> um, and we probably will pick this up again at a later time and maybe spend some dedicated time to it. But Fred, uh, where are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm right here. Okay. Um, we're, thank you all for doing this. Um, I know that in our group, there was, um, we were sort of just getting started, but there was significant transparency. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to have the, the scribes or the lead or the, uh, the spokespeople for each group just mention um, one highlight of what, of what uh, struck you about the people, about what happened in your group. However, um, do not mention the person's name um, because this is, um, it's very personal stuff. And this part of the message is being recorded. So we want to, we want to protect people's, um, we want to protect people's hearts and their, their willingness to be transparent. So does everybody get that? And we, we have to go fairly quickly because we're, we're, again, we're struggling a little bit for time. So let's, we have seven rooms. So let's just start with room one and um, spokesperson, you want to unmute yourself and uh, tell us about a highlight that happened in your group. Well, Fred, I'll speak for one, just nobody was really identified, but how do we take and, and put somebody that to, to get them into the love and good deeds? The word is we speak love and kindness into them. We also had a person dealing with emotional conflict in a relationship, uh, in a marriage. We also have another person who's in a, in a country that's really, um, struggled with, um, being controlled by, by what's going on. So how do you, how do you move out of where you are and, and find hope in this journey, even though the trial's heavy? How do you find that that hope and that journey even through the trial? And and just I think the, the another thing is to stay in prayer for one another and have those people around you that can encourage you and keep you going in those times that you're really in distress uh, to know there's hope and and stay stay on a word even if it's one scripture and find the hope in that scripture every day and not lose hope just because your circumstances may not be appropriate for hope in that what you think should be hope. Thanks, Bob. We, that, that whole issue of having hope and being in hope is so important. And of course, we can get hope from the scriptures, but boy, it's really nice when you have other people praying for you and encouraging you and uh, helping you to get back into that place of hope. So thank you. That's great. Let's go to room two. Spokesperson for room two, you want to unmute yourself and uh, tell us about, give us a highlight of your time. Yes, uh, we talked about the fact that those closest to us can often hurt us the most. So a couple of people shared about their relationship with their fathers as um, having affected them and their process of forgiveness. And at the end of the day, just knowing that um, boundaries are very important to guard your heart um, and to know when it's a good time to interact with the person and whether or not you're able to to cope or talk to them in that moment. So um, understanding what boundaries look like for you is super important. And also the um, ability to forgive ourselves was also something we discussed. Great, that's awesome. Thank you so much. All right, let's go on to room three. Spokesperson, you wanna 
unmute yourself and give us a highlight. I think they're just kind of waiting for it. I wasn't sure who was going to jump in. <laughs> okay. Well, go ahead, Lily. Um, okay, well. Um, give us we one just, highlight. Uh, so we just talked about, you know, you know, definite, there was someone that talked about um, someone passing judgment over a situation that this particular person is looking from um, a second party. And um, unfortunately, there might be assumptions or um, they're only getting a one sided information. And they're not really figuring out what's going on. So um, it's, it's just going back and realizing that, I, like, for me, I had um, said that we need to just extend grace. So we need to remember to extend grace sometimes when other people are maybe assuming or they're not understanding the situation very well. And then also always laying it at God's feet and asking them, asking him to show us how to have mercy and to extend, you know, to just forgive and walk in that forgiveness so that, you know, things are not uh, misunderstood. So that we, we ended up praying over that situation. All right, let's go on to room four, spokesperson for room four. And if there's no designated spokesperson for room four, then somebody from room four, unmute yourself and, and take a risk and tell us something that struck you uh, from your session. Maybe Luis could. Is that the? The, the Latino group. That's the Latino group? Okay. Well, let me, um, let me pick on Cynthia. Is she still on the call? No, she had to leave. Oh, okay. Um, he's, okay. not, he's not interpretation. That's why it's okay. yeah. Okay, you know what? We'll pass then. We'll pass on that. Let's go to room. And you can and and you can, um, Luis. You can maybe put something in the chat if you. Yeah, that would be good. A few sentences. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on to room five. Room five. Somebody yeah. want? Go ahead. Yeah, room five. Room five. I will reveal myself. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, great stuff, guys. Yeah, what a what an important conversation. And I read that chapter again last night, Sue. It was like the right timing for me just to read it again. So all that we walked through, it just really encouraged my soul and spirit. So, you know, in our conversation, we realized, you know, that we all face this. Every one of us are going to face these realities where we have to have forgiveness in our hearts towards people. And we weren't we won't walk around it. It's we're all going to be faced with these realities, and uh, you know we raise some issues that some of us were dealing with in that. But someone said that you know relating to intercessors and and intercessors often expose things like this in prayer and things that like this come up. You know, so we have to be aware of that when we are in that frame of understanding and 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 what we're pursuing and what we're going after. But I was saying in this, you know, with everything we when Matthew 18 has been a key passage that stood out for us for the last two years. And that was also something that came out these last two years have exposed a lot of stuff. It's particularly in families. Often this stuff takes place in your families. There's the first part, you know, and, but, but Matthew 18 is all about restoring relationships and how we have to see the enemy's hand in these things that he wants to just come in and just divide all the time. But where you don't have humility on both sides of the conflict, it's very difficult to resolve. Where there's pride and these walls come up, they, it takes a longer time for, for, uh, for pride to kind of break down. But those are essential kind of things in, in understanding that. I'm, I'm just saying also, like when you go through the Lord's Prayer, you can't avoid the line where it says, forgive those who sin against us. You know, you have to face it. You have to kind of take it on. And that's the point of the Lord's teaching us to forgive I think I said in this call a while back, the, the late Kerry Southey used to always say, pray for your enemy until you mean it. You know, someone who's wronged you, pray for them until you mean it. And it really allow, it means your heart has to be engaged with actually pouring out some sort of, you know, love towards that person, even though they've wronged you. It's hard, but Jesus modeled that for us. And we've got to learn to kind of do that. And, you know, the last, the last point I'll make is that I think what we all want out of this sometimes is some sort of validation or vindication for when we're wrong and often vindication doesn't come from you resolving it necessarily vindication comes from the lord and you have to relent and trust him in resolving conflicts and situations and things do take time 
but the spirit of God will lead you into all truth and that's so you know really in-depth conversation this is something honestly the church has to get right and how we deal with this we have to model this for the world of relationships that work well together even though we disagree at times and we walk through things is essential so thank you fantastic chapter yep that's so important thank you Sheldon and you're right we we at the church we need to get better at at modeling this and it needs to become normal to just share about the fact that we're going to have times when we're when we're uh people have wronged us or offended us and how do we how do we deal with that yep <clears throat> instead of just sweeping it under the rug which is what happens all too often and then people leave the church um so okay Let's uh, go on to room six, room six spokesperson. Hello, hi, I'll do that as well. <laughs> it's nice to mention, um, Sheldon, about Kerry Sowley. I really enjoyed her ministry in South Africa. Um, so um, I think one of the things was the uh, that statement which about the management of the of attack is more important than the substance. That was, that's really very important. Um, and, it's really difficult uh, when people cut off and don't um, want to communicate because how you can't uh, you can't resolve things. But maybe that statement that you said about praying, praying until you mean it, is also very good. Um, so the use of the word and praying for for people who are um, coming under attack. And something that I've often found is that um, when, when stepping out um, in ministry or other things, maybe it's through jealousy or whatever, I'm not quite sure, um, people want to cut you down and make everybody like the same. And they, instead of thinking, oh, right, if they could also rise up and, and also do the same type of thing. So this, those are the problems. And obviously atmosphere is where I think we pick it up um, if, if you're in, in a, a conflict situation with somebody, even if they won't kind of admit it, then it's a problem because then you can't really resolve it except through prayer and except by reading the word and um, really trying to get it into your own mind. Um, for myself, um, I, I had a problem with, with somebody, um, but uh, the Lord, did, he, he took me away from the situation for about five years. When I've come back, it's like so chalk and cheese. It's like so amazing. So God can solve problems in many different ways. But the worst is if you can't actually communicate with somebody um, because they want to cut you off or they, they misunderstand what you meant. So that was what we were dealing with. Thanks. Amen. That's so important, Joe. Thank you for sharing that. All right. So we were, I'm actually going to be the spokesperson for our room, which is room seven. And uh, boy, we, we had a great, it, we, we got deep pretty quickly. And a couple people shared that were very transparent. <clears throat> and one of them uh, was um, hurt by people in authority. Uh, the authority was abusive. And they were hurt and they realized that it's caused them to really have a hard time with anybody who's in authority that um that they're constantly concerned that it's the same thing is going to happen to them um you know in this new situation there so there's a fear in uh, in trusting people in authority the second person <clears throat> had an issue with i guess it was multiple people in the church and uh, it caused them to leave the um, the congregation that they were in and be in uh, a different congregation. I think they've been in a couple different congregations since that time. And it's been a number of years. And <clears throat> the person was just sharing how th they're having a hard time connecting in the church and uh, started to put together the, the co co uh, connect the dots, sort of that, that the hard time connecting may have to do with other people but it may also have to do with just of having been hurt and not wanting to be hurt again. And I think that this is, the, this is where the forgiveness part comes in. It's so hard to take a risk and be vulnerable when you've been hurt in a particular situation. And yet, you know, if you can't connect with people, um, you're, it's robbing you of, uh, of where the Lord wants to take you. And so I think this is, really food for thought as we go forward as watchmen, because as watchmen, part of the issue is that we are, most of us are leaders. And so if we're not right with 
the Lord and we have a certain area of bitterness or unforgiveness in us, it's going to show in the people that we lead. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a serious thing. And it's a, it's a kind of a frightening thing. And so we, we need to be right with the Lord. And I'm not saying this out of criticism. I'm just saying this out of, this is a very important topic. And we are, um, we, Susan and I, I know appreciate that there's in this group, there is a great deal of transparency actually. And, uh, and people are, generally very trusting and it puts the fear of God in me and in Susan uh, not to abuse that in any way or not to you know hurt hurt people and uh, because we the body of Christ needs to operate in love and you can't really operate fully in love if you're not sharing and you're and you're holding back and uh, so this is a very very important topic we'll probably go back to this um, and cover it in a different way in more depth in the, in the days ahead. But we, I just want to thank everybody for who shared to take a risk in sharing. And uh, um, it's great. So let and us... Fred, Fred, can I make one comment? Yeah, go ahead and make a comment and then give us um, uh, any announcements that you have and then we'll close off in prayer. Okay, um, <laughs> I just wanted to make clear that forgiveness is different than trust or to walk in forgiveness, but trust is earned. And that's, that could be another uh, topic for discussion on how we develop trust once that you know, breach has happened. Uh, it's, it's all a journey, but I wanna just say this, that I'd like to throw out here the concept of the Global Watch as a community of trust that we wanna lay foundations of trust for everyone here, that this is a safe place to land, a safe place to meet with God and with one another uh, for the sake of the nations. And we are moving into a culture that's going to be increasingly thrust forward in anxiety, fear, shame, and betrayal. And um, we need to separate ourselves from that and learn how to cope with it and uh, I, for one, we want to want to be open for people to walk through these these difficulties, and with health and with um, a good outcome. That's why we have the core values, by the way. And Matthew 18 is in the core values. It's it's very very key scripture. So. Amen. So do you have any announcements you need to make before we um, just that possibly Tuesday, the 3 p.m. Um, watch is going to be shifted to 4 p.m. We're going to do a watch with Egypt and uh, um, I haven't gotten it fully together yet, but watch the global watch um, threads. We'll put that announcement in that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, Jenny Hager, if you would unmute yourself and close us off in prayer. And if you have any comments you want to make, you get to have the last word before you close us, so. Well, how rich is this? Um, the, Lord, the Lord is reaching deeply into us and helping us, isn't he? And, it, and yes, I just think it's, um, it's so timely. It is just so timely because we're all going through so much. The thing that was coming to me was the Lord's reminder to keep our own personal gates, to keep the eye gate, the ear gate, the mouth gate, the heart gate, so that we watch when the attacks come against us. We don't let the, the, that attack come in through the gates, particularly to our heart gate, and that we know how in the spiritual realm to pick up the sword of the spirit and to cut off. The, the spirits that are coming against us, but then out of all the gates that are in us to love in response, love through our eyes, love through our ears, love through our mouths, love through our heart, because Christ loved us and that's what he did for us. So Father, I thank you. You are giving us such deep lessons, such treasure of your kingdom as you refine us to be like Christ himself. And Father, we know none of us can do this in our own strength, but your hand upon us, your love, your faithfulness, your perseverance with us, you never give up. If we fail, you just come around again 
on the next trial to teach us your ways so that we can walk in your ways and be like you. And that, Father, is just the most glorious thing. So we praise you and we thank you. And Lord, we bless everybody on this call. Uh, as we're all growing together, we're like a tree with deep roots going down, the global watch, a tree with deep, deep roots going down. Father, what a beautiful uh, tree this is growing to, in, into um, because of all the work that you're doing in us. So bless you, Father. Bless uh, Sue and Fred and everybody on the call in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Fred, Amen. Fred, 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 one more thing. Let's all say <laughs> hi to Katya. She came out of a big accident. Welcome back, Katya. Back with us hi, Katya. So Welcome to Katya. Okay. Uh, thank you, Katya. 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 Good to see you back. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Roberta. Thank, thank you, Ali. Bye. 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 Bye.